The goal of this problem is to find the electric field inside this sphere, the solid sphere, that has a charge density of rho. And of course, we're probably going to use Gauss's law, and I think it might even say so explicitly in the problem. But the way we begin is we uh, we begin with our uh, the definition of Gauss's law in integral form here, and as it deals with the flux, of course, this being uh, the flux, so how much those the electric field lines that uh, jet out through some sort of Gaussian servers that we might place around here. And then we dot it with how much is uh, actually in line with the normal of our Gaussian surface. And that is equal to the charge of the uh, enclosed, uh, the amount of uh, charge that's enclosed in the Gaussian sphere with a proportionality constant of one over epsilon naught, right? Okay, so the first step and the whole goal of uh, using Gauss's law is to try to pick a Gaussian surface, this dA, that is, uh, as much in line with the normal so that this dot product between these two vectors uh, essentially just becomes one. And so one of the things that we can do is create our Gaussian surface here to be a circle, of course, inside of this other circle. It would help if those actually concentric. Here we go. So that the normal force, I'm just going to draw the normal forces here. So the normal, uh, or not the normal force, but the, uh, the normal vector from the surface is in line with the normal vector in every direction. As you can see here, they're perfectly in line here, and they'd be in line in this way, and then this way, and this way. They're all radial. They all point in the r hat direction. So this dot product actually ends up just becoming a multiplication. So we'll take the magnitude of the electric of the electric field. If I can draw it a little bit better for you, for the team, and then we just take the uh, surface of our. Uh, uh, the surface area of our Gaussian surface, which is, by the way, the radius for a Gaussian surface will just be a variable of r, which is uh, going to be inside of the big R right here, too. So the surface area for that Gaussian surface is equal to 4 pi r squared, little r squared. And that is, of course, equal to the charge that's enclosed and proportional to 1 over epsilon naught. Now, since the whole goal is to try to find the electric field inside, we're just going to go ahead and Use some algebra and go ahead and solve for this. And again, it's still the magnitude. We know that it points in the radial direction. And so we can go ahead and add that later. But right now, we'll just concentrate on uh, getting it into a more workable form right now. So the next part right here is to find, uh, we, we have essentially everything right here. And then if we look at, uh, we go back and try to use some reasoning before we can go further in the problem, make sure we're going down the right rabbit hole is that the electric field uh, inside of the solid sphere here with a charge density of rho, uh, it's going to be it's going to be depending on on where you want us to, to measure it. So if the, if the if you want us to find out where the electric field is here, uh, then that's it's going to be different than if we find the electric field right here. So it's going to be dependent on R and it looks like we're actually going down the right uh, right track right now. So the next part is to try to figure out exactly what is this Q enclosed right here. So one of the ways that we can do it is we could just know that uh, the charge that's enclosed inside that Gaussian surface right here is going to be proportional. It's going to be some sort of percentage, and we did this in problem 2.8, percentage of the total charge that's actually uh, consumed or, or contained within that entire sphere here. And the way that we can define that percentage that ratio is actually equal to the volume that's enclosed it's to the volume total, right? So that's that's one way of representing the percentage, the, the proportionality between the two. And the way we do that, and of course we got, you know, volume of a sphere, it'll be, they both have a four thirds pi in common, and the thing that they don't have in common is the r cubed. So the four thirds pi will both cancel out and all that's gonna be left is the ratio of the cubed radius, radii of the two. And that is gonna be equal to our Q enclosed. And the whole point is to try to go from something that we don't necessarily know of into something that we do know. We do know the radius of the uh, big circle and we do know, or the big sphere, and we do know the charge density of it. So we can go ahead and use this right now and throw it over into our Q enclosed right here. Let's go ahead and write it down explicitly and make that substitution. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And I'll just go ahead and move this over. So the Q enclosed now, right now, I'll just go ahead and put in parentheses is everything that I just wrote out. And then Q total. All right. 
So now we can uh, cancel out some stuff and I'll just go ahead and do it explicitly. These go away here and then we just have a single little R on top. Let's go ahead and write it out explicitly for pi epsilon naught. And then we have our, uh, let's see here, our ratio of the radius of our Gaussian surface, which is the little r, and then our uh, the cubed radius of the actual sphere, and our cubed total right now. And at this point, uh, I think the problem explicitly asks us that to make sure to check it and see if it goes in line with problem 2.8, and it does. At this point, you can go back and check it. This is actually our answer for 2.8. So again, we're still going down the right path, but in terms of this problem, we still got a little bit of work to do because we don't know what Q total is. It wasn't necessarily given to us, but what was given to us was the charge density. So if we have the charge density and we multiply it by the volume of the total sphere, which we have all the information for, we know what four thirds is, we know what pi is, and we know what the radius cubed is. So we can go ahead and make that substitution. parentheses here. I'll just go ahead and explicitly put it all in, make sure we're not skipping any steps. So as you can see, these R cubes cancel out, these four pi's, four pi's cancel out, and we're left with something a little bit different, right, that we're uh, used to, but this is all, all totally correct in that sense. So that is the, what we have is the magnitude, the magnitude of the electric field some point within this sphere, and of course depends on R, right? So if we put the Gaussian surface here, it depends. But the full, the full information, we're gonna wanna know the direction as well. So we can go ahead and drop the magnitude signs and just go ahead and tack on the, uh, the R hat. Actually, we can do put it in the R hat right here, all knowing that we can actually turn this into uh, one thirds pi or epsilon naught rho, and we just combine those into the R vector here. The reason why we can do that is because we know, just from all of our knowledge from working with uh, previous problems, that the uh, since due to the, uh, the symmetry of the sphere, the electric field is all gonna point out in the R hat direction no matter which way we go. So we can use uh, inspection to go ahead and say it's gonna be pointing the R hat direction and combine these two to make these into the R vector.